Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this channel ad-free. Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike and this is an ink from the Birmingham Pen Company, which is called Heron. Comes in these white boxes, or at least they did. It also doesn't come in this bottle anymore. This is the 30 mil bottle and they have since up to the minimum bottle size to 60 mils and so it's just a larger bottle. I'm not sure what the packaging is. These just came in a blank white box with the, uh, the company name and such on it. I uh, made a label and then I just sort of scribbled on the top to let me know what ink was in here. This is part of the Chris series, which I'm also not 100% sure. I'm not sure how long this will be on the label. They have folded several of their categories together into something called the Keystone series, which encompasses the former Crisp inks and the Swift inks, and maybe one or two others. I don't remember off the top of my head. The Crisp formula inks were meant to be inks that were usable on a wide range of papers. They were generally made so that they would not bleed and feather and spread and that sort of thing, like the Swift series sometimes does, because the Swift series seemed very, you know, on the wet side, and these always seemed a bit on the dry side. And so as a result, they are better on cheaper, badder papers. Badder? Less good papers. So let's take a look at what this looks like on some paper. This is my usual Rhodia 80 grams per square meter paper that I use for these reviews. It is a coated paper, and so I'm not expecting to see anything coming through the other side on this one, even if this was a really wet ink, and you kind of, you don't see anything. It looks good, which is not a surprise. What was a little bit surprising to me is I actually had to change the designation on the flow because I started, I started doing a bunch more writing with this after I did the review, just sort of, you know, getting things together. And it uh, started making me notice that actually it was a little bit dry and a little bit draggy at times. I've had it in this pen, which is a Narwhal Nautilus, and it has a broad nib, which is not marked, but Frank from Nautilus, or Frank from Narwhal rather, told me that it is a broad nib, so I believe him, and it does feel pretty broad. It is, uh, it feels like a pretty normal flow nib, really. There's nothing strange going on with that. Pretty normal normal and this one, as you can see, when you're starting out, it's uh, much darker and you can tell that it was wetter going down here on the paper because it's darker, it's a bit broader. And then as you go, you start seeing areas where it's like very light. See the top of that T didn't quite come out and the top of the K and all this. And sometimes that's because there's, you know, ink and you're dragging the ink down the page and it just kind of stays the bottom with the K instead of going to the top. In this case, I think it was just because that's how, sort of how I pressed, like I may have been giving a little bit more pressure and that sort of thing. But it really started feeling a bit draggy by the bottom of the page and I was kind of surprised by that so I switched it to uh, just being like, slightly dry. Performance on the 20 pound paper however is really good. This is Staples 20 pound 30% recycled copy paper and this is the bad paper that you find in your office copier because it is the cheapest available stuff and uh, it worked really well on here frankly. It uh, looks pretty good. I uh, don't really see any feathers. There might be a might be just a couple here and there, but that's not a surprise here. What is kind of a surprise is that it really did not bleed through this paper. And as you can see, most things do. It's not a good paper for fountain pens. And there are just a couple of spots here and there. And again, this is with a broad nib. So if you have something smaller or finer or drier than this broad nib, it's going to work really well on copy paper for you. So that's that's a bonus. Okay, um, other things about this ink. It does have some mild shading. And uh, I, it's uh, 15 bucks in these 60 mil bottles. So not not terribly expensive for a fair amount of ink. Let's go ahead and do our writing, uh, or rather our uh, water drop test. We'll look at it on some other papers. We'll look at some inks that are kind of close to it. We'll check out some chromatography, you know, all that sort of jazz. This is, by the way, an ink that I bought. Thank you very much for the funds, all my patrons. If you'd like to support this channel and you like what's you, what you see and what's going on, think about going over to patreon.com slash inkdependence and joining. For a buck a month, you get uh, access to a, a discount code for Goldspot Pens and also the Discord, so you can talk to other uh, pen and ink nerds like you and I. And also exactly like I, because I'm there too. <laughs> Let's dry this up. That's my pitch. Of course, it's free to subscribe, hit that like button, leave me a comment. All those things help with the YouTube algorithms, help people find the, the channel. Oh, that's really interesting. All right. Huh. Okay, cool. So a bunch of the blue and like some green-ish stuff came up on the paper towel here. But you are left with a really legible gray undertone. That's really interesting, and it shouldn't be a surprise, but you never exactly know what's going to happen. This is what the chromatography for Birmingham Pinco Heron looks like. 
how cool is that, right? So you have gray here, you have a little bit of sort of, I don't know, ambery gold in the middle, you've got purple, you've got uh, teal, you've got a bright blue at the top, and all of it comes together to be this kind of, I don't know, petrol-y sort of color there, but you definitely get this sticking around on the chromatography sheet and also on the page. So pretty neat. A little bit of water, a little bit of water resistance here, I'm going to say. I mean, not as a, not as a teal, but as a gray, it's kind of a water resistant gray. Here it is on Domtar Bold 28, which is a pretty good paper for fountain pens. It's sort of medium. It's not uh, uncoated and bad like the 20 pound 30% recycled stuff. It's a bit heavier, but it's not sized and it's not like perfect for fountain pens, but it's pretty darn good. And uh, I think this ink worked pretty well on here. And just as with the Rhodia paper review, starts out dark up here. And then when you get to the bottom here, I mean, look at the difference between the top and the bottom of this page. And that's just because the ink didn't flow super well. Like it got a bit drier as it went and it kind of felt like a bit of a drag on the nib. Now this is a 28 pound paper. It is a little bit like, like more pillowy than your, you know, Rhodia stuff that's all slick, but a uh, little bit of a little bit of a drag, which I kind of didn't love. I think this paper just didn't really get along with it super well, but you can see there's not really any bleed through, just a couple of spots just here and there, which uh, isn't isn't weird for this paper. It's uh, that's kind of how it rolls. Next up, we have something a bit more uh, a bit more fountain pen friendly. This is an Inky Fingers currently ink notebook. This is wheat straw paper. So uh, sort of like uh, sugar cane paper and that sort of thing has similar qualities. And on this paper, I think it's great. I really like it on this paper. It didn't feel like it was getting dry, although I only wrote this little scribble. Maybe it'll get dry later, or maybe it's just sort of, this is the perfect texture for this uh, this ink. That could totally be the case. So I uh, inked this up uh, back on April 20th. Has a really nice color here. I actually think the color looks best here as compared to all these other papers. This is the most interesting version of that color. So get it on that wheat straw or that, um, uh, that's uh, sugarcane paper and I think you're gonna like this ink. It looks really nice. And then lastly, we have our most fountain pen friendly book. This is Tomoe River and here it is uh, right there. And I think it looks pretty okay on Tomoe River. I don't love it on Tomoe River. I think it makes it look a little undersaturated, which is kind of weird. Like I don't feel like it's undersaturated on the other papers. Just here, it just kind of just kind of was. I don't think it wasn't able to soak in. And so uh, I just remained a little bit lighter. Interesting. Interesting. There it is on a Colodex card. You can find a link for these in the description. Oh, yeah, the old a little gold or something on there, something hadn't dried. But uh, it looks really nice on this coloring Colodex paper. So if you like using the oversized coloring pads or something like that, uh, I think this ink will look really nice on there. I get a good petrol color. Also I have here Pelican Edelstein Aquamarine, which is definitely more green than Heron. Sailor Yamadori, likewise, more of a green than, uh, than Heron is, but these might be ones that you kind of know. This sample's a little bit old and faded, I say here. It's uh, just a little bit old and faded. It kind of soaked into this, this card a little bit more. These are not Colodex cards or coloring cards. These are an older product. Um, then we have Franklin Kristoff's Midnight Emerald, which is very close to this actually. And I like Mid Midnight Emerald quite a lot. It does end up looking very dark, but it's a nice Franklin Kristoff color. Then we've got uh, some others from Birmingham Pinco. They really like this color space, I think. And I have several inks uh, from them in this color space. So we have here Boiler Steam, which was one of the new formulations in 2020 when they first went to use uh, making their own inks in house. And I think it looks really nice. It's got more saturation, and uh, I think that looks good there. Then we have Birmingham Pin Co's Cure Refinery of Petroleum, which was a 2019 uh, ink, and so you probably can't get this one anymore, but pretty darn close. And then lastly, from Birmingham Pin Co, we have Pennsylvania Slate, which is in the crisp formulation and is pretty close. Well, if you ask me to pick between these two, I'm not sure I could, although this one I think is a little bit more, I don't know, it's got a little bit more uh, like bluish color in there and I, I kind of like it. I don't know, these are very close. I don't think you need both of these. Super duper close. Then lastly, we have Straight Pen, Straits Pens Honest Inks Sad Stormy Swedish Sea, which I got from my friend Kimberly in 2019. You can still get this. It's available at like Lemur Ink and some other places like that. And you can see this has a really nice uh, color palette going on there. You get a little bit of sheen 
even where it goes down heavily. You get more shading and uh, the flow on these are generally better than, uh, than, than well, they're not dry is what I'm saying. I usually like a little wetter flow or medium flow. So these are a little bit better for that. And I think this is a really interesting color palette. So um, if you like Heron, if you're like, this is a cool color, but maybe I want it to be a little wetter, maybe look up Straits Pens. Um, they are not sold super widely in the US, but uh, Lemur Inc has those. So you can check them out over there. I'll put a link in the description for that one as well. All right, thanks very much for hanging out and watching this video. Uh, let me know what you think of Heron and uh, you know what your favorite color in this space is because I tried to show I tried to show a bunch of them, but there's always more. So let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. When you watch the whole video, might as well hit subscribe. It's right there, and you'll see me in another video soon. Peace out.